You're listening to the Audacious Church Podcast. This message was recorded live at our Manchester campus. We know this is a great investment into your life. So tune in, listen up and stay focused. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. Great to have you in church. Make sure you stick around at the end of the service. We've got coffee and all that kind of good stuff. And if it's your first time, just through the doors to the right, we'd love to meet you there. The team have been expecting you and uh, they just want to make sure you get the best welcome. So do that. Tonight is the next part of our discipleship nights. Who came last term and you enjoyed it? You thought it was helpful, beneficial? What we do on Sunday nights is we worship together, we listen to uh, the Word of God, we teach, but also we, co- we have conversation and, uh, and prayer time as well. And so we're really going practical over the next few weeks in terms of relationships, what those look like, what different levels of relationships there are, uh, how we can engage better. And tonight we're gonna start off by talking about the difference between a crock pot and microwaves in your relationships. So you need to come back. Last week we started with worship and uh, it was a great night. So come back tonight, 5.30, and we're kicking off our series on relationships. So you might even find a friend. Everyone wants to find a friend? All right, let's get into the Bible. Psalm 133. If you got your paper versions, come on, old school people. I'm going to speak to you today with a paper Bible. That's what we're talking about, brother. Come on. Anyone else got it on your phone or your iPad? Anyone got the whole Bible on the tablet of your heart? It's just all there. <laughs> As if you liars in the room, you can respond at the end. Psalm 133. This is the last part of our Psalms of Ascent series. We've been looking at the 15 Psalms over a few weeks now and looking about uh, how they take us from where we are living in our current reality to being face to face with God. And uh, the Psalms of Ascent help us in the natural, in our life here on earth, that we, we need to lift our eyes, we need to ascend, we need to not just look at our circumstances, but we need to look to God. But there's also a wider uh, context to the Psalms of Ascent, taking us from from our created, physical, tangible world to when we will be face to face and we'll see fully and we'll look in His incredible face, the face of Jesus. And so that's what they're doing. And we're looking at Psalm 133. We're going to read them. We're going to pray. Uh, It's... uh, from verse 1 to 3, one of the shortest Psalms, a song of a sense of David. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Say that again. Let's say it together. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down the beard running down Aaron's beard, down the collar of his robe. It is as the dew of Hermon where falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows, other versions say, commands. God bestows or commands His blessing, even life forevermore. I love how the Bible's clear here that God bestows blessing. God commands blessing. God demands blessing where there is unity present. I wonder if you just either just put your hand on the neighbour shoulder next to you. If they're comfortable, you're comfortable with that. Or maybe hold their hand if you're with them. They're part of your family. God, we just pray for our church. We thank You for every person in Audacious Church from every campus from every location, from every service here in central Manchester. We thank You, God, that uh, You command blessing when we're together. And so, God, we speak. Uh, would You speak to us 
Would you encourage us? Would you challenge us today? God, would you help us to be contributors? Would you help us to be a people that, that, that see unity? Wherever we go, that we would be people that bring people together in our small groups, in our teams, God, in our homes, in our services, that we want to see Your commanded, bestowed blessing. And we know by the Word of God that it comes when we are together. And so we speak that in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, there's nothing like some building work in your home to test the unity of the home, the family. And we're right in the middle right now of our building work in our home and there's like dust everywhere, literally layers and layers of dust. And where everything at one time had systems, we knew where to find things. Now there are no systems. Everything is, is like survival of the fittest. And I'm here today, so if some, I don't know what happened to them, but God bless them. No, Emily's in Sheffield. But, but every morning it's like try and find the things that you need to get through the day. And it could be that your bowl is rinsing in the toilet because we only have water upstairs at the moment. And so maybe the bowl's just rinsing in the toilet. You find that, it'll be fine, don't worry. Just, uh, just clean it a little bit and then you've got your cereal. You know, the contents of our entire garage are right now in our lounge. The contents of our entire bedroom are right now in our lounge. The contents of our entire kitchen right now are in, guess where? The lounge. We're sleeping on pots and pans and pray for us. But it's just carnage and it goes to the next level when you get the, you know, builder's lorries coming up and you've never thought about street car parking politics before until this moment. Has anyone experienced car park politics on your street? Oh my goodness. Never has that half a metre been so important. Like you don't own this street. You've just parked there for a long time. I get that. But just like, let's have a little bit of grace for each other, right? But it's in environments like this where we can make mountains out of molehills and we can stress the small things like they're massive deals. But if we're all honest, we've got a tendency to all do this, that we make majors out of minors. And we, we can argue about things that if we actually thought rationally for a few moments, they're not that big, big of a deal. If you're honest, you, you've, you've rode in on your high horse one too many times, only to realise, man, what am I actually doing? Have you ever been in an argument and then thought halfway through, why am I even here? I'm not even bothered about this. And... and all of us have that temptation to just go with, with, with what we believe and what we think and everybody else is wrong or everybody else is just not as intelligent as I am because we are the superpower to rational, logical thinking. We're the superpower of spiritual connection with God. And so what we think is the truth, right? Right? Maybe it's the next service and not you guys. But we've got to make a decision that fundamentally what we're about here is showing the love of God to one another. And the Bible is saying if we want to receive the blessing of God, then it comes not through our opinions and our thoughts, but it comes through our unity. That's where God commands a blessing. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? Just, it feels so good. The Bible is like, it's precious oil poured on the head. In the Old Testament, we know that oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And so when, I think, when I'm thinking about oil that's poured out on the head, it, I, I think about Acts chapter two, where we see the fire of the Holy Spirit poured out on their head. 
In Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 to 4, the, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? The Bible says this church was all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. Fire from God descending on the heads of each one of them all together in one place. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity for there God bestows, God gives a blessing. And it's like oil that's poured out, the oil of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine if our church was a church that was fully unified every week we sought to seek the peace and we sought to, uh, to live in unity with one another, how the Holy Spirit would, be, would, would saturate us. Can you imagine if your home was like that, where you sought to seek the peace and you sought a unified home, that you would see the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit saturate every person in your household. Come on, glad seven people are really excited about that at home, seeing the manifest presence of God. Can you imagine in your workplace? Come on, we've all got those annoying, I mean, not me because I work for church, but you've got all got annoying people in your offices. Can you imagine if your office was fully unified and you saw God's commanded blessing when you walked in, it was like people are praying in tongues and singing and you're like, hallelujah. See, this environment of unity is where God commands His blessing. And the reason why these people in Acts are, are all together in one place, they're not speaking just about this physical space, this this people with 120 people in this upper room, they're speaking way more than a physical, tangible place. They're speaking about an environment of everybody's thinking, their spiritual life, because all of these people have been witnesses to Jesus Christ Himself. Remember, every one of them has heard the voice of Jesus Christ. So they're clear on what Jesus is saying. They're clear on what Jesus stands for. They're clear on His Word. They're clear on their followership of Jesus. They're clear on what He wants of them. He's clear that He wants them to pick up their cross, carry their cross. He's clear that they're all clear that what is required of them. And so the Bible describes this environment as they're being all together in one place, they had heard Jesus' voice ringing in their ears and had tangible encounters with Him. And we see later on in the book of Acts some of the ingredients that further fuel this unity and some of the fruit of unity. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 to 47, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles and all the believers, every single one of them were together and they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone as they had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. I love that. The Bible describing church that, yes, church met in homes, but they also met in the temple. Every day they wanted to gather corporately to meet, to sing, to worship, to come under the Word of God. They wanted to be together. Every single day they met in the temple courts. So they broke bread in their homes, small groups, and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. What a church. You wanna be a part of a church like that? 
Hello? Hey, you want to be a part of a church like that? That's what a united church looks like. And the first kind of ingredient of, uh, of a united church, a church that's together, and I believe that you can sow, you can put in to your environments is, is the character trait of devotion. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that they devoted themselves. They didn't wait for somebody else to devote them. They devoted themselves. They made a decision, as for me and for my house, we are gonna serve the Lord. Devotion is, is dedication. Devotion literally means enthusiasm. It means passion. It also means commitment to a cause. It means dedication to a purpose. You only need to look at football fans to see devotion. Sometimes it's completely irrational. People flying over from Ireland to watch the football today. I mean, it's just irrational. I remember we had the opportunity, me and Zach, went to Manchester United versus Liverpool at Old Trafford at the start of the season. You will all remember, we absolutely smashed them. It was an incredible result. Uh, but what we did is we were walking up to the stadium, we spotted the Liverpool bus and something, I don't know what it was, it, it wasn't the Holy Spirit, I'm just being honest with you. It, it wasn't a blessing bestowed, it was something internal just erupted from within my son. No, it's actually <laughs> partly me. We saw the Liverpool bus. I mean, instantly there was just something. I just was like, that is horrendous. It looks horrible. I mean, it's just, I just can't look at that bus. It's just filthy. Anyway, we just started running. We were running at the bus. <laughs> we're literally both of us running at the bus. And as loud as I've ever screamed in my life, my son is going, boo! I mean, he's literally climbed a fence. And we're both just go, boo! As loud as we can. Boo! Boo! And then I just thought, you're a 43 year old man. What are you doing? Boo! And said, so I'm like, I'm just with my son, just looking at him. He's still going. And then the second thought I had was I'm a pastor. Right? Someone from church sees me now. This is not a good look. So I'm just like, may the Lord bless you. May He keep you. Make His face shine upon you. It's just totally irrational. I don't know what happened. We obviously ended up winning the game and we are literally hugging and kissing people next to us. We were taking selfies with this one guy. We switched numbers so I could send him the picture. <laughs> like, what is going on? There's almost a picture of devotion. Just It's more than just the feeling when you feel good. Devotion is something that takes over every part of you. It causes you to do things that you wouldn't have once done before. It causes you with dedication and enthusiasm to commit yourself because football fans, they're not just watching something, they feel part of something. And so our devotion to the house of God, our devotion to God Himself is a dedication to Him and His cause. And as a result of that, we commit ourselves to God's people. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, to the fellowship and to prayer. It's amazing that three out of four, I would understand that. Devote yourself to the teaching, the Word of God. Yes, devote yourselves to the breaking of bread, sacraments of baptism and breaking of bread. I understand that. Devote yourself to prayer all feel like spiritual disciplines. But the fourth area is they devoted themselves to the fellowship, the people. It's, they've almost put that up against prayer and listening to the Word 
and the breaking of bread that we as the church should commit and devote ourselves to one another. That we should not just live isolated lives in our spirituality, but no, we should say, I'm gonna commit myself to everybody else. This is my spiritual home. Then this isn't a crowd, this is our family. Devotion to the fellowship. The original word in the Greek is koinonia, which isn't just speaking about singing kumbaya together. It's the same word that's written in Philippians chapter one when it speaks about Paul praying for the church in Philippi saying, I remember your partnership with the Gospel. It's the same word, koinonia, partnership, and the same word in Acts, fellowship. Fellowship and partnership are the same thing. In the Bible, there's no separation. There isn't one group of people that just turn up and another people that partner with God's cause. No, when the Bible speaks about fellowship, it's saying commitment to God's cause. I wonder if you could say, I am devoted, first of all, to God. Could you say, I am devoted to God's cause? Could you say, I am devoted to God's people? You know you're devoted by a couple of things. A, where you put your time, and B, where you put your money. Those two things show my life what I'm committed to, what I'm devoted to, what I'm dedicated to, what I'm committed to for following that cause. And so I wonder if we could challenge ourselves to say, come on, am I devoted to God, to God's purposes and to God's church? The second thing we see in Acts chapter two is in verse 43. And the Bible says that they were all filled with awe. They were filled with awe. That's an environment of gratitude and thankfulness, an environment that's just full of wow, wonder. We get to do this. We get to be a part of this. We get to see the blessing bestowed on us, the Holy Spirit saturating us so that we communicate with people from all over the world that have gathered right here. The church is seeing this incredible favour, this incredible blessing, and they are full of awe and wonder. I believe common appreciation of God, of God's works and God's people, when we are thankful for one another, it builds unity. It's an incredible ingredient that we can add into the mix, that we can contribute to build an environment of unity where God commands and bestows His blessing. You'll know the acronym TEAM, T-E-A-M, together everyone achieves more. You see it when you see birds flying. Have you ever seen like a V formation of geese? And they're flying to, uh, you know, probably in the autumn, they're trying to get away from here, find some, some sun, right? Pretty much like most of us in the summer. We're like flying away. We're getting out of here. We, need, we just need some sun. And that's what they're doing. But have you ever thought about one of those geese might have a personal preference? Rather than go to Madagascar, they'd rather go to Barbados. Some of you never thought about it. You're thinking, this guy, seriously, wheel him off. But, 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 but maybe you have had that thought that these birds may have different personal preferences. But it's a fact, and somehow these guys know it, that together they can actually go uh, between 70 and 80% further if they fly together than if they could on their own. It's the power of synergy we see illustrated where they understand somehow that we're gonna get way further if we do it together. Yeah, my preference may be Barbados, but we're all going to Madagascar. And so we're going because I would rather make it to Madagascar than get halfway to Barbados, right? 
And the same's got to be true of us that we understand for our personal preferences, we can either hold on to those and maybe get a third of the way, half away. Or we can for a minute just put aside our personal preference and say, do you know what? I'm going to submit firstly to God and then I'm going to submit myself to God's cause and then I'm going to submit myself to God's people. And what happens when we do those is we find that we make it way further together than we ever would do if we were on our own. Listen to the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 to 18. The body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, see, the Bible is strange, right? You thought my bird thinking about Barbados was weird. I'm just taking my influence from the Apostle Paul. Why would the foot even think? Some of you just read the Bible to like, oh, yes, yes, Lord. Just now if the foot should say, no, foot has no mouth, right? Because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop to be part of the body. If the ear should say, think about that. Hello. (laughs) Because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, that would be very weird. Where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, every one of you, every one of us, just as He wanted us to be. Come on, I don't know what your personal preference would be, But God has designed us to be in the body just where He wants us to be. Down to verse 25, there should be no division in the body. Its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, then every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. I love that. That is what we're talking about in thankfulness, mutual appreciation, that we look around the room and we thank God for one another. We thank God for our kids team that serve, that are helping to raise your kids in the ways of God. And they will not depart because our kids team are praying for our kids alongside our parenting. Every week they come prayed up, ready to declare the Word of God to children. Our kids right now, hearing the Word of God. Thank God for our amazing kids team. Thank God for our hosts, who every one of them volunteer their time, most of a Sunday, to be here and to keep us safe, to have a smile on the face. They're not paid to do that. They do it because they're serving God. And they understand that when you pour out, God Himself pours into your life. Thank God for our worship and our production team who don't just serve on a platform, but diligently behind the scenes are working their craft day in, day out, so that they can lead us into the presence of God as David did. David wasn't just having a go. The Bible says he was skillful. Thank God for a creative and skillful worship and production team that commit to the cause and serve us by leading us into the presence of God. Thank God for every one of our teams who commit time, effort and energy. Come on, this is the body, the church. Thank God for our teams. I've seen Michael going out on a Friday night to reach the homeless, to feed people. He's not looking for affirmation for someone. He's already found his affirmation. And so he's working out that affirmation to serve the needs of vulnerable people. Thank God for Audacious Foundation through seven different ministries are reaching the practical needs of our city. Come on, this is the body in action. We don't all have our personal preference and we, we got to do this. No, we just serve because God has put us in the right place. Today, we're in the right place today. You've got to believe that. 
just as He purposed. Last, last thing, super quick, is found in verse 44. And it's that this, this church was a church of generosity. They shared together everything they had in common. There, there was a serving of others' needs. And I think this contributes massively to an environment of unity. You know, threat in our fast pace and adrenaline filled dog eat dog society where we're overcrowded, overworked potentially, and we just got so much that we have to do because we're so important. But the temptation and the threat is that we don't have eyes to see the needs of our neighbours, our brothers and our sisters. We don't reach out beyond the four walls of our own castle. We live within the walls of our lifestyle. We live the, within the, the own walls of, of how we're doing. Because we're so important, we've got to treat ourselves to some self-love. When the Bible actually speaks that you'll find that when you serve others. When you seek the needs of others, you watch how God takes care of you. And this is a spirit of generosity. The Bible says, and you've got it on your envelopes, it says, Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24, the word of the generous gets larger and larger. The word of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And I think often the, the more we focus on ourselves, our environment, our world gets crowded in to a point where all we can see is our own existence. And we end up living smaller lives. Whereas if we make a decision, I'm gonna live in a larger world. I'm gonna put myself among needs of others that are bigger than mine. We live a generous life that gives us an expansive environment. And this is an environment, a church that's unified, a church who thanks God for one another, that's generous, that we meet the needs of other people. A church that's devoted to God, devoted to His cause and devoted to His people. It's amazing that God promises that it's there, it's that environment. How good and pleasant is it when God's people dwell, live in unity because there He bestows, He commands, bless Him. Acts chapter two, they were all together in one place. We hear you, Jesus. We know what you're asking of us. We're gonna follow you. We're gonna obey. We're gonna be in the room. We're gonna be there because God, you told us to wait. We're gonna be patient. And it's there that the fire of God descended. The blessing of God. I guess we all want to experience that, don't we? We all want to experience the oil, the fire of the Holy Spirit that is blessing, that runs down and runs through and runs over. And the Psalm 103 is speaking about this oil that, that descends on us, but the blessing isn't just about us because it runs down, it runs down the cloak and it runs and it, it, wherever you go, you take that blessing with you. And I just wonder if you could make a decision today that I'm gonna be a contributor to an atmosphere and an environment, a culture of unity. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 3 that we should, 13, that we should make every effort to keep the peace, keep unity. Make every effort. Unity is not always easy but it is demanded of us. It's part of our responsibility is to make every effort. Could you say you do that every week? You make every effort to keep the unity of God's people. For the disciples, making every effort was hearing you gotta go to the room and not asking so many questions. We need all the logistics working out. We, we might go when we're ready. They just went. They went to Jerusalem. The disciples, it looked like making every effort was waiting when nothing was happening. So we thought it'd be immediate, but, but we're still waiting. To the disciples, 
the obedience, the, 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 the making every effort look like worshipping. And then the Bible says, then there was a suddenly. When they'd made every effort, then the suddenly was poured out. Your making every effort may be that right now you make a decision to let go of unforgiveness. You forgive someone. See, forgiveness is not something that just God just magically throws at you. It's a decision that you make. And then you make that decision, you commit to it, and then you take that offence to God. You say, I am forgiving this person. It, it might require some effort and some going again, and it will definitely require some prayer, but I've made a decision. I'm gonna let go. Maybe you're making every effort is to initiate a conversation with someone, you've left it too long and you need to initiate that conversation. I believe that God is asking us all to make every effort to keep the unity. Make every effort. Because when you do that, we will see the blessing of God bestowed on us. We'll see God's commanded blessing. Jesus told us that John 13, that it's by our love for one another, by our unity, that the world will know that you are my disciples. It's that important to God. It's that important to God that we keep the unity of His house. Remember this together with all the other churches, this is God's bride. You don't wanna mess with His bride. We want to make sure we present ourselves as a radiant, pure bride. And it requires you to make every effort. Can we pray together? Let's bow our heads. God, we just thank You that You're committed to Your church. You said You'd build it and You're coming back for it. Wow, you're coming back for a radiant, incredible bride. When you come back, it's not gonna be subtle. Every, every person will know that you're back for your bride. You're back for a beautiful, radiant, united bride. And so you're asking of us today that we would, we would take this seriously, that we would keep and we would make every effort to keep united, to keep the peace. To live lives and live relationships that honour you. Sometimes that's gonna require us to be bold and be courageous and have conversation. But we do thank you there is a commanded and bestowed blessing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you're here right now. You're filling us. As we hunger for You, as we thirst for You, You fill us. We want to feel and experience Your tangible presence right now. Thank You, Jesus. Maybe you're here in this room and you've never said yes to a personal connection or relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that God knocks at the door of your heart. He knocks, he makes Himself known to you. But He doesn't demand anything from you, but He does ask, if you would open the door of your heart, if you would open up the door, then I will come in, I will sit with you. But Jesus doesn't just ask us to worship from distance. He says, I wanna be with you. We get to live in relationship with God through Jesus. Jesus made that possible. If you're here and you're saying, I don't yet have a personal connection, relationship with Jesus, but today I want, I want Jesus in my life. I want to open up the door. I'm willing to make every effort. I'm willing to turn away from the way I have been living. I'm gonna turn 180 degrees and I'm gonna follow you. You wanna start that journey today. Start the journey right now. I wanna encourage you. Don't wait for another moment. If you're like, I need to do that today. I'm gonna give you a few seconds 
and then I'm gonna pray. But I do wanna know who I'm praying for. So all around this auditorium, you're saying, I wanna say yes to Jesus. Quickly, pop your hand in the air just so I know who I'm praying with. Quickly, do that right now. Five more seconds, I see you guys at the back. Four others, lift your hands now. Three, I see you, great. Others, lift your hands, two. Don't miss this moment if this is you. Just quickly pop your hand and say, pray for me, this is me. I wanna say yes to Jesus. Final second, one. Anyone else, don't miss this moment. Okay, dear Lord Jesus, we pray for all of these amazing people that just lifted their hands. I pray, make yourself known to them, even right now. I know you will show yourself to them as you did to me. I pray God that they'd have courage today to follow up that decision by finding out what's next. How do I follow you from this day forward? I pray God that as they commit to being in relationship with You, that You'll speak to them. Sometimes You'll challenge them, but You will walk with them every step of the journey for the rest of this life. And I thank You, God, that You promise not just life in this life, but eternal life with You, just simply by acknowledging You are Lord, You are Saviour. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Come on, let's Thank you for listening to this Audacious podcast. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. We'd love for you to join us at one of our campuses, Manchester, Chester, or online every Sunday, 10 a.m. and 12 p.m.